7.1 Characteristics of Exponential Functions By this time in the year, we have seen many different functions from y equals x, which is a linear function that comes up to like this, to y equals x squared. So we've got the parabola for this quadratic function and y equals the square root of x function that looks like this. Then we've got this new function that we're going to introduce called the exponential function. So the exponential function is a function in the form of y is equal to cx. y is equal to c to the power of x. Like the other functions, the y coordinate of any given point on the graph depends on the x coordinate, but this time the variable is an exponent. So let's create an exponential function. Let's say y is equal to 2 to the power of x. And to help us graph it, let's make a table of values. Now, x, there's no limit on what x could be. x could be a positive or a negative number, so it could be any integer, it could be any rational number, in fact. But let's, let's work with some simple things like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. If x is negative 3, then 2 to the negative 3 is equal to 1 over 2 cubed, or 1 over 8. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, or 1 over 4. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2 to the 1, or 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4, and 2 cubed is 8. So we can plot those points. Let's start with these positive ones here, 0, 1, 2, and 3. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 4. And when x is 3, y is 8. The negative values of x, when x is negative 1, y is going to be a half. So that's going to be right over here. That's easy to plot. x is negative 2, y is going to be a quarter. So that's half of a half. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll make a little tick mark to show half. And I'll draw that in. And when x is negative 3, y is an eighth. Gets a little tighter here. That's a half, remember. That's a quarter, and half of that is an eighth. Now let's investigate some characteristics of exponential functions. If, uh, if we look at the graph to start with, just the plain graph, and we were asked to describe the shape of the graph, what would you say? As you looked at the positive side where x is 1, 2, 3, or 4, x is greater than or equal to 0, you might say something like that the graph is getting further and further away from the x-axis. Uh, you might describe the graph as getting steeper. It continues to go to the right as it gets taller and taller and taller very quickly. When x is less than 0, when x is over on the negative side, then the graph is approaching the x-axis. But it'll never get to the x-axis. For example, if we have y is equal to 2 to the negative 1, we get uh, 1 half. If we get 2 to the negative 2, we get a quarter. If we get 2 to the negative 3, we get an eighth. But we never actually get there. There's a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis. So you can say that the graph gets further away from the x-axis on the positive side and closer to the x-axis, but never actually touching it on the negative side. We could also talk about things like the domain and range, the y-intercept, the x-intercept. As we've seen before, the domain consists of all the possible x-values in a function. And we've talked about that here, that x could be anything. So we can write the domain as being the set of uh, all the x's such that x is an element of the set of real numbers. The range, on the other hand, does have some limits. Because there's a horizontal asymptote, y never actually reaches zero. It gets pretty close, but it never reaches zero, and it stays on the positive side. It stays above. So we'll see all the y values that are greater than zero, where y is an element of the set of real numbers. The y-intercept happens when x equals zero. So in this case, we can see that when x is 0, y is 1. And we saw that before. y 
when x was equal to 0 was equal to 1. If we look for an x-intercept, well, since it never crosses the x-axis, it's not applicable. There is no x-intercept. Now we can take a look at some other functions too, other exponential functions, and just see what happens. So let's say that we get rid of this y equals 2 to the x, and we make it y equals 3 to the x. Let's see what happens. When 3 is raised to the power of 0, we get 1. When y is equal to 3 to the 1, we get 3. And when y is equal to 3 squared, we get 9. When y is equal to 3 to the negative 1, we're going to get negative a third. And then very quickly, we're going to get close here to 1 ninth. So it's almost as if the graph is, like, it turns sharper, right? It's lower down here on the left, but steeper up here on the right. Okay, it turns quickly. It still passes through the same point. The domain is the same. The range is the same. The y-intercept is the same. The x-intercept doesn't exist in the same way. Well, what about if we do something like 10 to the power of x? So y equals 10x. When x is 0, 10 to the 0 is 1. When x is 1, 10 to the 1 is 10. And already, we're significantly higher than we were with 3 to the x or 2 to the x. When x is negative 1, we get 1 tenth, even closer than our 1 ninth or our 1 eighth over there. So difficult to graph this one. Difficult to graph this one just because it, it is so close to the x-axis on the negative side and goes up so quickly on the positive side. But note that the domain, all possible values of x, the range, y is greater than 0, the y-intercept is still 1, and the x-intercept still doesn't exist. So it didn't matter if we had 2 to the x, 3 to the x, or 10 to the x, any value of c here, remember we're talking about the exponential function where our base is c, so any value of c that's greater than 1 will have the same domain, the same range, same y-intercept, and the same non-existent x-intercepts. Well, what about if the c value is less than 1? Greater than 0 still, but less than 1. Something like 1 half to the power of x. Okay, so y is equal to 1 half to the power of x. And let's say we use those same um, x values as we did before. Negative 3, negative 2, 1, 2, 3. Well, let's start with the positive ones and y is equal to 3, or x is equal to 3. If x is equal to 3, then 1 half cubed because 1 over 8. So when x is 3, that's a half, that's a quarter, there's an eighth. When x is 2, we're going to get 1 half squared, or 1 quarter. So when x is 1, we're going to get a half. And of course, when x is 0, we're going to get 1. When x is negative 1, 1 becomes 2 to the 1, or 2. 1 half to the negative 2 becomes 2 squared, or 4. And 1 half to the negative 3 becomes 2 cubed, or 8. If we look at the characteristics, all the same. Same domain, same range, same y-intercept, still no x-intercepts. So all those characteristics are the same except that the function looks like it's reflected around the y-axis.